Hello there and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways you can hide your credentials from version control and basically just to keep them in a safer place, because we obviously don't want to just place them in the classes themselves. It's not a good practice. Each way is a bit different, but you can use the one that fits you the most. The first way is by storing the credentials inside a properties file and then add this property file to the git ignore. So we have a new project over here and we can go to the project view, expand our project, and now we're going to add a new file. Of course, we can save it inside the local properties, but we can also create a new file and name it keys properties. And inside we're going to add our key. So let's say API key, and it's going to be one through four. So this is our API key and it is located inside this file. Now, if we want to use this API key inside our project, we need a reference to this file. So inside the Gradle of our app, inside the Android tag and inside this default config, we're going to make some room. And we're going to add these lines. So we basically just create a properties object and then we load this file and use the data inside. So we go to the project, to the root of our project, and this is the root of our project. And then we look for a file named API key properties. Of course, we named it keys. So let's just rename it to keys. And this is the file that we're looking for. And you can see it over here. And we just want to get the data from this file. And then we basically just set a build config field. It's of type string. It will be named API key. And then we go into our properties object and we get the property named API key because this is what we named it over here. And now we can basically reference this field from anywhere inside our project. Now, in order for the build config to be reachable, we first need to run our app for the first time. The app should build itself and then we are going to be able to reference it because if we go to the main activity right now, or the fragment and I'm going to try to access the build config. You can see we cannot see this API key variable. So let's run the app for the first time. Of course, let's sync it first. Okay, so now that the app was built, we can stop it. And over here, we can look for the build config. So let's say, our key build config and we can find our API key and we can also see the value is really our API key so we can store it and we can use it inside our fragments or anywhere inside our project and of course we don't need all of this it's just another import so we're going to get rid of this import and we can see our API key, we can store it and we can use it. Now, of course, we want to hide it from version control. It means that when we upload and we push our project to GitHub, for example, we don't want this file to be published. Otherwise, people can go to our repository, especially if the repository is public, and then they can get this key. So we're going to add this file into the git ignore file. And the git ignore file simply tells the version control which files it should ignore. So you can see there are a lot of files already there and we're going to add our file inside. So keys, properties. So now when we push this into our remote repository, this file is not going to get pushed. But remember, if you're cloning this project to a new computer, you are not going to get this file, so the project will not work. In this case, we also want to remind the user of the project that he needs his key. He should not forget about his key, and if something is not working, it's probably because of the key. 
So we can just create a file over here and it's going to be the app class. And we use this class for many things, especially inside MVVM. And it needs to extend the application. So this class will be the first thing that will run when we start our project, even before the main activity. So inside, we can simply say val API key is our build config API key. And then we simply check if we actually got the API key. So if pro exception, and we want to let the user know what is the exception, missing API key. GitHub is ignoring it. Okay, so maybe it's not GitHub, but just let the user know what is the problem and what's going on over here. Of course, we need to place this inside the onCreate. We can just use these things inside the class itself. And it tells us that it's always false, right? Because we always get the API key. But if we actually clone this project from GitHub, we are not going to have this API key. It's going to be null. So then we're going to receive null and we're going to get this exception. So we won't have to guess what is the problem. We are going to get notified that we're missing the API key, right? Because this file is not going to get downloaded when we clone this project from GitHub into our new PC. The next way we can store our credentials is by simply saving them as a string and then retrieving these strings. And of course, we can add the entire file into gitignore like we did in the previous way. So we can simply go to res and we can go to values and find our strings. And we can actually create a new file. We can name it cred xml. We don't want to name it keys or something like that because it's going to be very obvious that we're storing credentials over here, okay? So we want to be discrete, even though we're not going to publish it to our remote repository. So inside the resources, we're going to have a string. And then we're simply going to save the value and the name will be API key. So now inside our project, we can simply retrieve it. Require context because we're in a fragment, get string, and then our string because it's still a string and API key. So now we get the API key from the strings and we save it inside this variable. And like we did before, we need to go into our git ignore and we need to add this file. So because it's inside a bunch of different subfolders, we are going to do something like that. Res values cred xml. This is basically the path to our file. So now it will not be published to our remote repository. So both of these ways are basically the same. The only difference is that in the first way we get the API key using Gradle and in this way we simply get it from the strings. Okay. Now the third way is a bit different. In the first two ways we simply stored our credentials inside a specific file and then we set the version control to ignore the file. In the third way, we're actually going to store our credentials on our PC and then we can access them from all of our projects on the same PC. So to create this file, we need to go to our user's directory, the name of our user, and over here we need to find our gradle.gradle and inside we're going to create a new file and we're going to name it Gradle. 
properties and of course we're going to remove the text because we don't want it to be a text file anymore we want it to be a properties file now it's going to give us a warning but it's okay so we named it gradle properties and now if we go back into our project and we actually need to restart our project so i reopen the project and now if we go over here actually if we go to our android view we can find this new gradle properties and it says over here global properties it means that this file is shared between all the different projects and it's a file that is located on our pc and not inside our project but because it's inside the Gradle folder, the project is aware of this file. So now we can go inside and we can add the key or the credentials. And again, we have a warning. So in order to get a reference to this property, we go to Gradle again. And over here underneath this code, we're simply going to define a new variable named global, but you can name it whatever you want. And we're going to go to our project and we're going to find a property. And this property will be the same name that we gave. So API key two, right? Let's just be sure. API key two. Okay. And now we got this value and stored it inside this variable and the same way we placed the api key from before inside a build config field we're going to do the same so build config field string and we're going to name it global key and then we're going to simply place this variable, okay? So we're going to store the value of this API key too inside this build config field. But in order for it to work, we also need to add these escape characters. So we convert it into a string, otherwise it will not work properly. So now we can go to our first fragment and I think we also need to run the app. Let's just try to access it build config and yeah let's run the app again and now val let's name it global build config and we can find our global key and if we hover over it we can find our global key so even if we delete this project and we open a new one we are still going to see this file and we're going to be able to access so this way is more suitable for situations when you have credentials that are more general and things that you use in several projects. For example, some kind of credentials for your JFrag repository or credentials for some kind of database that you use in multiple projects. So it's going to get stored on your PC. And of course, make sure you back them up. And we don't even need to include this file inside git ignore because this file is not a part of this project. So when we push this project to our remote repository, it's not going to even look for this file. So that's a very nice way to store our credentials. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. Please leave a like and subscribe and see you next time.